<laughs> oh, so um, all seriousness aside, I'm going to put two dates on this slide. They have nothing to do with this slide. But I looked ahead, and I now I know when we're going to tentatively have our first unit exam. Because since we meet only once a week, it gets kind of problematic. Um, <laughs> what? Okay, so the date of February 12th, of course, it's a Thursday, and that will be our Unit 1 exam. Now, that's a ways out there. If you kind of look, actually, that, what is this, the 22nd? So we have the 29th, the 5th, and then, you know. So there is a chance, sometimes what happens, especially in my night classes, I kind of, what I say, ease into the next unit of material, even though we're kind of pending a unit exam over Unit 1, we'll start Unit 2 lecture stuff just because of how the schedule is. It'll be fine. But the other thing is, you know how I like to do, and I'm going to do again, is on the 5th, a week before that, I'm going to have those review sessions. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are an entrepreneur, or you, your job takes you out of town, and you cannot be here, I'm going to say Unit 1 Review. And I'm going to go ahead and say before and after. So does anybody have a preference before? Your options are... 4 o'clock or 4.30? How many people want 4 o'clock? I don't care. Right? Okay, How many people want 4.30? Okay. What you want? Oh, I was just wrapping mine now. Let's do 3.30. No. Oh, well, we do 5.30. No. Two we have to lecture then. So I should pick. Thank you. What about 2 o'clock? No. What? <laughs> How long is this? This is my last. Yeah. That what now that's a valid you? question. How long? Hour, Thirty minutes. No, long usually they are thirty, sometimes up to forty minutes. Or they're going to be fun games. No. Pizza. No. If we bring. Not unless pizza. you bring the pizza. Oh, okay. So we'll go ahead and say four thirty. Will you do a backflip? No. Frontflip. No. Front do I look like I could do a backflip? Who oh, no. Front flips are taken. Okay, so the unit exam then the following week, and remember it's segment A, which is technically 5.30 to, what, 6.20? Okay, so you'll have the whole kind of, you know, 50 minutes to take your test. But by then, um, you will have had, remember for the review sessions, no, we don't do, we don't have much fun in games, but for the review session, I go through the review sheet. Yeah, and the review sheet has been distilled from your unit exam. Make sense. So what would the class be like on the fifth? So on the fifth, it will be, be normal lecture. What's that? Would that be like unit two stuff? I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. <laughs> if we get done early now, will you do the test earlier? No. Okay. I kind of looked at what I've done for my other semesters, and this seems to be what it works out. So. All right. But fair enough. But you can take the test um, early if you can't make it that date for some reason. You can take it early, but you can't take it late. Do you grade on a curve? Never no. Okay, I didn't know if you did. No, I don't grade on a curve, but every once in a while I'll take one last look, and I'll, a lot of teachers do this, at what the test was, and sometimes I'll take it out of fewer points than I put possible, so it benefits you. Any other questions? Do you ever have to like flamingo fail your class? <laughs> do I like flamingos? That took priority. <laughs> yeah. I think he just barely got that question wow. in. I think our son used to love flamingos. He's like 23 now, though. I don't know if he still likes flamingos or not. So call him right now. They're okay. Does anybody ever fail my class? Yeah. Yeah. I figured But um, not many. And usually, um, seriously, and this pisses me off, usually the people who fail are the people that don't come. Has anybody ever failed and has been has had good attendance? No. <laughs> so that's why I just want to say, really, if you're struggling, then you should still come. Okay. So basically, so. you have to legitimately try to fail to fail. Yes. Okay. Well, actually, if you miss more than four classes with the math with all that, you have a good chance of failing. Yeah, that participation points down. Yeah. Yeah, but so I'm not I'm not a babysitter though, but <laughs> it's just kind of a natural. Thing. Oh, one more date. I went ahead and picked out when your projects are due. So your projects are going to be due. I put a Friday in April. April. So 4-10, April 10th. Okay, it's a Friday. So I'm for you're going to remind us at a later date about this. This is the yeah. only time you get information. 
I'm going to try, and I'll put it. I'll put these dates out on the Twitter feed, so we'll all remember them, so we can kind of float back. What's that? Oh, Project Do. Which one? Um, the the if you read the syllabus, I know there are like four options, but you only have to do one. Oh, you only have to do one. You can do more for extra credit. You can do more than one for extra credit for ten points extra credit. That but those extra credit points only go towards missed assignments and missed quizzes. Any other questions? What's Sweet. The name of um, church. I guess Why something about Pet church? Cemetery. Have you seen the movie Pet Cemetery? Yeah. Okay, I they guess slice there's. Slice the Achilles tendon. I know. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that is brutal. Yeah. Classic. Okay. <laughs> Sir, no, go ahead. Nope, we're good. Does it have to do with a cat or a flamingo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was your question about cat? So the cat's. The cat's name is Church. Yeah. And mm -hmm. from your teaching so far, I have a feeling you believe in evolution. I do. So that's kind of interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, don't get me started. We can scientist talk. Scientist who named one of his theories on evolution over a biblical and name. And I will not get into a discussion over evolution and creation. Oh, well, then why did you start that conversation? It was just interesting. It was just yeah. an interesting fact that I put together. Yeah. Did you no. No. No, but honestly, my heart broke. I I am a, and I can talk more about this. Um, but I definitely believe that um, science. You can be a scientist and be a Christian. I am a Christian, so just for the record. Um, but the other day, I had a student say something about. So I heard all scientists are atheists, and I was like, oh, oh my gosh. Again, I don't like to debate it. I won't debate it. Isn't a Form like this, but you know I can talk about it later. There are books written on such things. Okay, so we need to talk about energy. Hope you got some left. Okay, and in physics you might have heard there's different ways to kind of break energy down. One way is the energy associated with motion. It's kinetic energy or Ke, motion, kinetic energy. One is potential energy, and a lot of times I'll think of a book, okay, or something sitting on a table. Um, it has gravitational potential energy. You know, it's, it's sitting there, but my cat or something, we have a lot of indoor cats too, could just knock it off. Haven't you ever seen a cat do that? You're like, why? Okay. Cats are evil. <laughs> they, they are evil. <laughs> so it can knock it off, and it, this potential energy due to its height above the ground then is converted to motion, kinetic energy, and then it stops down there again. Okay, so we have potential energy, kinetic energy. And with regard to, even within potential and kinetic energy, we have different forms of energy. So you've probably heard of these, mechanical, electrical, chemical, nuclear. That last one up there, electromagnetic radiation energy, sun. Not just Lost. the sun, but, what's that? Lost, that TV show. Lost? Yeah. Electromagnetic radiation? Wow. There was a whole theme of, like, the first three seasons, we were talking about electromagnetic That was a hard series for me to follow. It was really awesome. Boring as shows I've ever seen. <laughs> I thought it was awesome. I mean, maybe because I was just staring at Lily the whole time. But it was really cool. <laughs> it's a tough one. So, lost aside, okay, kinetic energy. So that's the energy associated with motion. It could be slow motion, be fast motion. One of the things, especially when we start talking about um, water being a liquid or water being a vapor, is there water in this room? Yeah, water being a vapor or water being a solid. We're going to talk about that motion some more. In fact, I have a slide to kind of talk about motion of something if it's a solid, liquid, or gas. But if particles are a gas, does this, does this look familiar, this blue box? Remember when we saw, when um, you started out with the air gets thinner as you go up? Those look like air particles. <sighs> bouncing all around, okay. This one down here with these cute little H2O molecules are kind of trying to show you that there's more than just what we call translational motion. There's also vibrational motion and rotational motion. Cute little, there's water in here, not coffee, right? So these cute little water molecules are, they aren't banging around like gas particles, but they're moving, okay? All matter has motion, unless it's at absolute zero. What? So I hope you're not drinking. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thanks for thinking of me between tripping and drinking coffee, yeah. Okay. 
So I added a slide. Um, this is one that um, I showed to my chemistry students when we tried to talk about motion of matter and the motion of matter in its solid, liquid, or gaseous state. So let's see if this comes up in a timely manner. Yes, <laughs> convection and conduction, exactly. So radiation and convection are the two most important players in our weather. And I think you might have a homework question. I, I, sometimes my homework questions vary. Okay. Convection is shown here with the blobs of warm. See how this pan has got, you know, heating over the, oh, they're camping. Okay. So down here it's warm. And what do we know about heat in your house? Hot air rises. Rises, exactly. <clears throat> And the reason hot air rises is that actually um, it puffs out and it becomes fluffy, what we call buoyant relative to the cooler air around it. So basically we have that warm water in the pan rising, it cools down and it falls, it warms back up again because the bottom's hot, it rises, okay, we have actually have a, several convection cells being shown there. And the least important thing in, in transferring heat in our Earth system is conduction. And conduction is the dude hanging on to the pan. Conduction clearly needs molecule to molecule to molecule to molecule to, ooh, that's hot, okay? So conduction kind of snakes through. So the first two are most important. When I say most important, I mean most important to this class. Okay. So a little bit about convection, not blobs of water, but blobs of air. And actually, um, there's something called localized convection, and that's what this is, okay? Where, let's just say, um, you have terrain that kind of, these looks like kind of plots of um, fields, doesn't it? Kind of alternating how you've planted your seed, you can kind of see the rows. Well, what happens if you wear black and it's sunny outside? Hot. Exactly. Hot. Heat. Your black stuff will actually, and I have a slide coming up to say as much, but when you wear black, basically any light that hits that is sucked in. Okay? What happens when you wear white? It reflects. It reflects, exactly. So we can have this happen with terrain, the other Earth's terrain and um, the sun shining on the Earth, different types of terrain. So let's just say that little brown plot, a little darker, kind of like wearing a black shirt. That chunk of air gets a little bit warmer, and it's like the air in your house. That warm air is going to want to rise, kind of like a hot air balloon, okay? And so this is showing that warm air rise. Now, if something rises, it kind of creates a vacuum behind it. So something's got to replace that. So actually, we're going to kind of see cooler air kind of replace it. And voila, we have um, a couple of convection cells actually there. One of the things we're going to talk about later when we talk about severe weather is, is if the atmosphere is unstable, okay? An atmosphere that's unstable is basically what's being shown here. What does that mean? Basically, your chunks of air want to rise. Why do they want to rise? Because they're warm compared to the air that they're rising into. That's it. I mean, why do you get those cumulonimbus clouds? It's unstable, and you have that sort of situation going on localized to that where that cloud is. Okay, so convection is definitely a player. But can you see where it relocates this thermal energy? It's taking it up. It's relocating it from point A to point B to vertically. Okay, so electromagnetic radiation, affectionately called EM radiation. Now I feel like we're kind of moving from um, the verb radiation, kind of to relocate energy, to an entity, electromagnetic radiation. They are a set of energies, I call cousins, energy cousins, okay? Um, infrared radiation is a cousin, um, light is a cousin, radio waves is a cousin, microwaves is a cousin, you're gonna see all the cousins here in a minute. These are the things they generally have in common, all those different radiations have in common. They travel in, um, in waves. They have a wave component and a particulate component. Um, okay. 
they travel these forms of radio, all these different types of energies that you're going to see here in a minute, they all travel at the speed of light in a vacuum. But do they have travel at the speed of light around here where there's air? No. If you've heard of different refractive indices sort of things, actually that is saying that light travels at a different speed in air than it does in glass. <laughs> okay? And light is one of these cousins, electromagnetic radiation. So they have things in common. Okay. I call them cousins. This is showing kind of the wave-like property. The green and the blue both go together. The E stands for kind of the electrical component. The M stands for the magnetic component. It's, I think it's complicated. It's like a physics thing, right? But basically, when you think of light, what I want you to kind of think of is it going like this in space. When you think of um, radio waves, they go like this in space because they're another form of electromagnetic radiation. X-rays, okay, they have all that in common. But what differs, and I kind of want you to, this is a Greek letter lambda, kind of the upside down V with a tail. I want you to kind of get that down because that is a player when we talk about the different, different, um, different forms, different cousins. That's what we call the wavelength. That is literally the distance between to, com to complete one wave. It's the wavelength. That's what lambda means. This is the lambda. So here we have two different energies, two different um, electromagnetic radiations. And can you see where, which one's longer, A or B? B. B is longer, exactly. It's still traveling at the speed of light still has a magnetic electric component, still has a particulate um, component we call photons, but it's longer. And this actually has less energy down here. The longer the wavelength, the less the energy. So I'll go ahead and add that here. This one has less. I'll just put E for energy. And I'll put longer wavelength. I have a song coming up. Um, but this is just to try to kind of show you um, kind of what we have going on with regard to wavelengths. So over here, these are short wavelengths. Over there, those are long wavelengths. So these are the cousins. Now, did I tell you you guys can bring a note card to your exam? I think I told you. Front and back. Bring like a magnifying glass if you want. But my point is you might want to get these different energies on your note card. So gamma rays, x-rays, and this is from shortest. Can you guys see that kind of that mist going in front of the, over here? It's like a cloud. Well, it's not there now. There it is. Do you see it on the, no? Okay, longer than ultraviolet, then we have visible. After visible longer, we have infrared microwaves and radio waves. So the thing about it is, just to kind of put it in perspective, we don't do much with, um, I don't do much with numbers here, but for those of you who are kind of familiar with uh, scientific notation, okay, that 10 raised to the negative 14th, you can think of that as 1.0 times 10, wait, oh, no, sorry. 0 0.0000, and you need like 14 zeros? Does that sound right? Okay. There's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, and those are units of meters. Okay. So that's the fraction of a meter that a repeating unit of gamma rays. This much of a meter. And you've got a repeating unit. That's the wave. Put another way, 10 to the 4th is, is 10,000, right? Okay, good. Over here, 10,000. 10,000 meters to get one repeating unit of a radio wave. Is that not cool or what? And then back to the whole astronomy thing, they have different telescopes to actually make images of these different energies, with these different energies. Okay, so I'm going to play you this little video. I've already liked it. I hope it's still out there. So electromagnetic radiations, hopefully you kind of got the kind of cadence of the different, such a variety in energies. 
because I am amazed that, you know, we're cool with radio waves passing through us, you know. Uh, but when it, come, when it comes to gamma rays, that's not going to be a good thing, right? Um, and with regard to energy, it goes back to those two waves that we looked at. You know, the shorter wavelength gamma rays have, are most energetic, and the radio waves are least energetic. Okay. So kind of smack dab in the middle is visible light. And like the song said, you know, that's what our eyes see, visible light. But... Um, I don't know if we have any people that dabble with the military, but they're, they have those infrared goggles. Right there. You can actually um, pick up a thermal signature of, of other stuff, right? Um, but I do want to focus on visible light for a minute. So um, I think it was a student that told me this mnemonic device, like a person's name, his first name's Roy, his middle name's G, starts with a G, and his last name is Biv like B-I-V, Roy G. Biv. But that actually, that acronym can get you down to the colors of the rainbow in the right order. So red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet is the order of the colors from longest to shortest wavelength. And it's kind of nice if you look at the cousins on that previous slide, what is a little bit longer, um, what is a little bit longer than red? What energy? Know the, the, the energy that's outside the visible wavelength that's longer. What's that? Infrared. Infrared was what I was after, yeah. White is actually all of them combined. Yeah, but if you look at the, the, the electromagnetic radiation a little bit longer than red, you get infrared. What about a little bit shorter than violet? Ultraviolet. Yeah, so it's kind of nice. These things that we're already kind of familiar with are other energies that are kind of embrace our visible, visible light. Uh, um, my husband thinks he's funny. So his thing is, why is the sky blue? And there's lots of answers to that. And one of the reasons, so you know when to stop mowing. <laughs> I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I can go ahead and finish talking now. Okay. So one of the things that Newton found out is that Newton used a prism. Basically, you can send white light through a prism, and what do you get? The colors, exactly, the spectrum. Um, there are a lot, in chapter 16, um, in the next unit, I think we're going to start with chapter 16 in unit 2, but clear back in 16 is where they talk about rainbows and such. Mm -hmm. In order to get kind of this prism effect, basically liquid water droplets are making the white light spread like that, like a prism does. Okay. But I think this is neat. One of the things that Newton did is he separated, he used a prism to get the rainbow colors, and then he took another color to see what would happen if you sent it through a second prism. And all it did was basically change, bend it again, kind of change its trajectory. So isn't that smart? All sorts of neat things. Um, okay. So radiation to me can be kind of like a verb, like it's one way that energy gets, you know, energy radiates, like we saw that, ra that energy radiating from that fire. But it's also electromagnetic radiation is kind of a noun, it's that energy. So I didn't think about that much till tonight. It's funny how you go through this material so many times, you're like, oh, well, that's how that works. But there are some laws. Remember the difference between a law and a hypothesis. A law is just the way it is. There are some laws of radiation. Okay, and um, one is that objects ooze radiation, um, all sorts of radiation. So like I said, we're oozing infrared radiation. We're oozing thermal energy. Um, and it's hard to imagine that we're oozing, um, let's see, microwaves, okay, or but that we're oozing ultraviolet radiation. But who would know because we can't see it? Okay. Um, so all objects and we're going to kind of emit a range of energies, and they don't have to be all visible. And the deal is, is that the hotter the object, two things are going to happen, okay? Um, it's going to emit more energy, and we're going to see these curves here called black body radiation curves that kind of say it's emitting a lot of energy or not much energy. If the curve's high, it's a lot of energy. If the curve's low, that's not much energy. So the hotter the object, the more energy it emits, okay? But also, if it's hot, not, not only does it emit more energy, but it, it's kind of slanted toward the shorter wavelengths. Okay, the peak is, is kind of slanted towards the shorter wavelengths. I have the two objects I'm going to show you these curves of is the sun 
Okay, and the earth. The earth oozes. It's got a cute little baby curve. <laughs> um, uh, so the laws of radiation, the, the last law, have you ever heard of like, um, um, well, when you insulate your house, okay, you basically are trying to take matter that doesn't itch too much, that um, is, doesn't interact with um, heat. He bumps up against it, and it's like, whatever. I don't want you heat. It basically says, I'm not, I'm not working with you. Okay, you just stop where you are. Stay in the house. Okay, that's what an insulator does. Um, and this is actually talking about the opposite of an insulator. This is saying, and the earth is this. The earth is not a very good insulator. The earth is basically, it's like, sun, go ahead and heat me up. I'm going to soak up all that thermal energy you're going to give me. The earth, the geosphere, is great at sucking in the energy, and then it re-emits the energy. Okay? It's good at sucking up the energy, and then it kind of oozes out from the earth. Okay, so... So here's the curves I was talking about. There's the sun. Okay, and so kind of you see the color. Um, um, this is visible. Okay, these are different wavelengths along the y. Sorry, along the x-axis. These are all different cousins. Okay, it doesn't show the gamma rays and the x-rays, but it starts with ultraviolet, visible, and then infrared, and it doesn't show the microwaves and radio waves. Okay, but it basically says this is what our sun is sending. And this is what the Earth is emitting into outer space. Is that not adorable? Okay. So a few things about that. Is, is the Earth oozing visible? Oozing, is, is it glowing visible light on its own? No. Do, have we seen space shuttle images of the Earth shining? How can we see space shuttle issues of pictures of the Earth? That's right. The sun's shining on the earth, and we're seeing that, that back, exactly. It's weird to imagine our beautiful blue ball just out in the middle without a star, out in the middle of space without a star. Wouldn't that be well, so sad? Well, it would sad? be impossible to imagine that because it wouldn't exist. Yes, that would be problematic. Doctor Who could make it happen. Yes. In one of his accidents. So, what this says, <laughs> we have, clearly the sun is hotter, right? The sun is hotter than the earth. So you still, you see this, you know, it's up and it's to the shorter wavelengths, right? So actually the sun runs about, um, in terms of Kelvin, it's about 6,000 Kelvin. In terms of Fahrenheit, it, the surface is about that temperature, 10,000. That's a lot. That is very hot. It's the fingerprint, though. And just as an aside, when we want to know how hot a star is, what we do is do one of these, okay, and then we, this is the radiation curve, and then we can tell how hot the star is without visiting it. Okay. So, these make sense. These three things I'm going to show you. So, let's just say the sun is like, dude, hey, little planet, I'm going to send you this energy, okay? Well, these three things can happen to that incoming energy within the Earth's atmosphere, okay, and what, whether the energy is absorbed, whether it's transmitted, or whether that energy is redirected, it depends upon which energy it is, which of the cousins it is, and it depends upon the particulates that are in the atmosphere, the gases or particulates that are in the Earth's atmosphere to go ahead and interact. Okay, so interaction, the outcome of interaction depends upon energy and the particle. Okay. So let me go back to this. Case in point, I mentioned the rainbow thing, right? Rainbows? Okay, that is one outcome of liquid water droplets and visible light. Okay, the sun has to be a certain angle, but, but that's an outcome. Okay, so a little bit of a busy slide, but basically if we look at 100 units coming from the sun, what happens to that 100 units? So this is kind of a balanced sort of problem. You see the clouds? Okay, the clouds have an outcome here. And this is just kind of a one random scenario. Clouds can be um, fuller or flatter or thinner, but in this case we're showing about 30% is reflected um, back to space. 
And that doesn't have to do with the cloud. That actually has, just has to do with Earth's atmosphere. Um, let's see. Lost space by reflection scattering. Oops, sorry. That 30% actually is a sum of the 5, 20, and 5. This 5 plus that 5, and that 20 makes the 30 lost. Well, what leads we don't care about. Check this out. 20% actually interacts with the clouds, and the clouds, the atmosphere, not just the clouds, absorbs that energy. But this looks like a flare, doesn't it? This is why the troposphere gets colder as you go up. About half of the energy, and again, it's kind of, we have cloud issues, and clouds are definitely not the same from day to day or from location to location. But in general, about half of the energy coming from the sun makes it to the geosphere. I told you the geosphere is the opposite of an insulator. It's like, okay, it's going to absorb it and re-emit it. So that is an important aspect. So something like the Earth, we talk about, it's a characteristic called its absorptivity. You guys told me black, black shirts, high absorptivity, <laughs> okay? Um, white shirts, low absorptivity. Um, that good ozone, what layer is the, is the ozone in? Oh, I said stratosphere, yep. Um, that actually is kind of like the Earth in that it... Like I said, it kind of turns into a mini radiator there in the stratosphere. Another thing that actually is a variable gas, remember we said there are three variable gases. There's water. What's the other two variable gases? Where's the one measured in Hawaii? CO2. Yep, CO2 is a variable gas, and then ozone is a variable gas. Yeah, three variable gases. Actually, water vapor can be a player in taking energy, okay, and not taking energy. So <coughs> I think this is a good place to stop. So between that slide and this slide, we'll kind of pick up with a running start. On uh, next week when we meet, okay. So next week when we meet, though, I really think we'll get through... Chapter 1 is due next week, and I'll put those dates on the unit exam on Twitter, and let me know if you have any questions between now and then.